Hello, welcome to this live webinar. We're finally doing this. I'm pretty excited about this. I am Kosha Kuna. I am co-founder of Sketchbook School. And um, that is where we actually just started the new course about colored pencils. Just this week, uh, last Monday, we started the course colored pencils sharpen your skills and a lot of people have uh, signed up and are doing their homework and it's fantastic to see all the colorful art that people are making um, so for this course uh, we brought in amazing artists Andrea Joseph, Swaski, uh, Katja Tegova and myself <laughs> we are all teaching in this course to show how many ways there are or actually that there are endless ways of using colored pencils and uh, because colored pencils are so versatile and they are very expressive as a medium even though a lot of people actually um, think they are kids tools or just for coloring books so um, and that is something that we are actually proving wrong <laughs> in this in this course and some of you who are watching hello I can see people trickling in here from New Jersey from the Netherlands from Portland Oregon um, from Finland even oh that's great Seattle Oklahoma City um, fantastic Israel everywhere so that only shows how big this community of colored pencils lovers is um, I also just realized that I forgot to plug in my um, airpods so let me know if the sound is okay or if I should switch um, just just so we know why we are here. Some of you who are uh, watching are enrolled in class, which is fantastic, and I'm really happy that you're here. But if you are watching this video and you haven't signed up for the course yet, then you might be wondering what I'm actually talking about, this online course. So let's uh, watch a short, a very short and fun trailer that shows you exactly what the course is all about, who the artists are uh, that teach us uh, to apply colored pencils in our own sketchbooks and then we will move on to uh, a webinar um, that um, includes a lot of expertise so let's go can't help it but that just makes me so happy um, I just put in my airpods so just checking is the sound okay I think so because I don't see um, any of the um, comments right now uh, popping up like sound is off so I think we're good the chirping was actually on my computer so that should now actually be um, away now that should be gone so chirping and popping sound uh, gone and let's just dive in what we are actually here for so um so you saw that we have a bunch of fantastic colored pencil artists who actually just found their way through 
how they use colored pencils and uh, we learn a lot from them and we get inspired but today we are bringing in an expert from manufacturer Derwent Judith Selchuk she will tell us everything we need to know about what color pencils really are what they are made of why they behave in a certain way and how to take the best uh, how to make the best choices for your art so whether you need wax based oil based watercolor pencils she will just explain it she will do some demos um, and she will give us just fantastic advice Judith is Derwent's resident technical artist in the UK and uh, we 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 actually recorded our chat earlier this week, so um, if there are any additional questions, and we are covering a lot, um, I will be answering them at the end of this live video. And Judith is also online, following all the comments, so she can answer any questions posted there as well. So, let's get started. Hello, Judith! Hi, good morning. Hi, thank you for being here. So you are the expert um, at Derwent. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? I'm Judith and I'm a freelance illustrator and technical expert that works on behalf of Derwent. Um, and an addict colour pencil, absolutely love them, and have been addicted to colour pencil for about 12 years now. Excellent. I think there are a lot of people who are addicted to colored pencils. I love them too. And um, it's uh, probably because they are so versatile and so, you know, you can be really expressive with them. And that's what we are finding out in the colored pencils course as well uh, at Sketchbook School. Um, but there are a lot of questions around uh, colored pencils, you know, a lot of people think they are for kids or they are just for coloring pages and they might not really know the bits and bobs and all, also the uh, technical aspects of the tools and that's why you are here to explain that. So shall we dive into just um, some um, uh, questions that I have for you? Yeah, that's brilliant. brilliant. Perfect. Okay, so um, well, if I go to the shop, there are so many different uh, colored pencils, and also if I look in my in my drawers, I can see the ones that you know I have um, collected a lot of them, cheaper ones, more expensive ones. But what exactly are those differences between the cheaper? Uh, uh, pencils and the artist quality pencils. Can you tell me a little bit about that? There's a lot of difference and <clears throat> excuse me, that's where the problem comes in with people thinking that they are for children and for colouring in because there are the lower quality pencils and then there's the artist grade and there's a lot in between and the lower quality ones are filled with all kinds of binders and they have lower quality pigments and they don't layer as well and you don't get the color build up and you'll become easily frustrated and you'll give up because you won't get the desired effects and you'll think it's you and you'll you'll lose interest and you'll feel defeated so you give up whereas the artist quality ones they're loaded with really high quality pigments, but they have a really good binder. And that's the difference, is they have a really smooth binder. So they layer really, really well. They have vibrant lay down, vibrant color. And then you don't feel defeated. And then you want to carry on. And that's the real difference with them. And that's the difference between the children's grade and the artist grade. And if you start as you mean to go on, then you're more likely to want to carry on doing art and sketchbooks than giving up at the first hurdle. Absolutely, I think you are so right um, that um, it can be really discouraging if the tool doesn't work for you that well. Um, so I don't really know exactly the technical aspects of those colored pencils and many of us don't because 
there are two, actually two different kinds, the um, wax-based pencil and the oil-based color pencil. Can you explain what the differences are? The difference is in use. There's actually, they're actually very similar. There's not much difference between them in that the, the use. The wax based is smooth to lay down. They layer really well. They are bright colors. Whereas the oil is more opaque and it glides. So it's a preference. You Normally you either like wax or you like oil. The other thing is, what people find is sometimes they feel as though oil is taken more seriously because they say, oh, I'm using an oil-based pencil. It's a bit like, oh, I'm an oil painter, rather than saying I'm using a wax-based pencil. But if you're using sketchbooks, it really doesn't make that much difference. It is preference of use. Um, some of the brighter colors come in wax-based pencils. So what I would say is try them both and see what you like best. Get a small sample of each of them and see what you like. Yeah, so it is really, very different. Yeah, so it's really personal personal uh, preferences and uh, once you you feel the difference, then you know what to choose. That's a very good point. Um, does it matter what kind of paper also if um, for for the experience that you have with these pencils? Paper Yes, sorry to interrupt you. Paper is just as important as your pencil. Um, there is no point spending a lot of money on pencils if you're then going to hardly invest anything in paper. Because if you buy a lower quality paper, the first thing it's going to do is resist your pencils. So you go out to the store and you can invest a lot of money in your artist quality paint pencils and then your paper to repel them. So you've defeated yourself at the first hurdle. You're looking for paper, a slight texture to it. So your pencil will sink into the troughs and valleys of the paper and your pigment will sink into it. And you can build up lots of nice layers. If you have a really smooth paper, it's on top and you can't build layers up. So you're looking for good quality paper and one that's not shiny. The lower quality papers are quite often coated um, it's to save money and they will repel your colour pencil and especially if you're using a water-based pencil it can quite often pool on top so I noticed um, especially I was watching your videos before I came and you quite often suggest uh, a good quality sketchbook paper and I like a sketchbook and if it buckles and cockles I quite like that in a sketchbook but it's nice to be able to start a sketchbook never knowing what you're quite going to do. I quite like that. And I don't mind if it buckles, but I do like to know that it will take water. So a good, a good quality cartridge paper is good for colour pencil or any water-based pencil. Okay, that is really good advice. Um, did you want to show anything with the differences between oil-based and wax-based pencils? I do. I've got a, a little thing for you. Here you've got this orange segment on top. Okay. And you have light fast pencil here. I just wanted to show you quickly the lay down and pro color, which is a wax-based pencil. Okay. An oil-based pencil, it mixes rather than blends. And it's a very opaque lay down. So as you can see, the colour is really, 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 really vibrant. So I'm having to put very, very little pressure on it. Hardly anything at all. Although I haven't got an orange in my set, I can mix the colour together. The pencils glide over the paper. It's only a cartridge paper. It's nothing special, mm -hmm. but I can mix the colours together. Just with the pencils themselves. It feels 
describe how it feels. It feels buttery and creamy. Sometimes with colour pencils you feel a squeak. It squeaks on the paper mm -hmm. and it can resist. With an oil-based pencil, you don't get that at all. Okay, so it's very smooth to lay down. Now, with a wax pencil, okay, so the same area on Pro Color, I'm having to push a lot more. I'm having to apply far more pressure to get that same colour intensity. But the layers are a lot smoother, so you don't see your pencil strokes as easy. So if I want to build up smooth blends, mm -hmm. I'd choose a wax-based pencil. And would you need more layers for that? Yeah, a lot more layers with a wax-based pencil than an oil-based pencil. Okay. Okay, I hope these up for you. Okay, so with the light fast, you can see my pencil strokes, but the colours are very, very vibrant. I hardly had to use any pressure whatsoever. With the pro colour, I had to use more pressure, but my layers are really seamless. They've been easy to layer. I can probably use 20 to 30 layers on a piece of cartridge paper. Wow. And I've got no pencil strokes. So if I want to save time i'm going to use a light fast which is an oil-based pencil if i want more layers i'm going to use pro color which is a wax-based pencil okay and, and you said that with the wax-based pencil you need to apply more pressure yes because it's uh, harder but is it then um uh, when you apply more pressure, don't you indent the paper so it's harder to apply more uh, layers? I don't use so much pressure that I'm indenting the paper. If you think okay. of your handwriting pressure, mm -hmm. okay, so I, what you would use to write your normal letters, I never use more pressure than that. That would be my maximum. So I never use more than that. So it's my heaviest pressure is my handwriting pressure. I see. So could you conclude that um, oil-based pencils are maybe for people who don't have a lot of patience and then wax-based pencils are for people who like to take their time? That'd be a really good description, very good. Okay, well, that's that's great. I mean, that's that's. I did not know that, and I think that's actually that makes it easier to um, if you are looking to see what kind of colored pencils you want to buy to actually look at your personality, and then yes. decide based on that, which is great. Yeah, it is, and it's personal preference. Yes, of course, of course it is. And that's also with the handwriting, you will find that too. Like some people press really hard and some people don't. So there's your difference too. Yeah. Okay, that, that was great. Great to see. Um, uh, let's see. Um, what else? Because those are the differences between uh, wax-based and oil-based. Um, the one on top was oil and the one below that was wax-based. Um, so, right. um, if we are talking about the, the many kinds and differences, there is also the water-soluble pencil. So, there seem to be many kinds and qualities as well for uh, water-soluble uh, pencils. Um, and how do you know who, how to choose those? There's, it's not so much that there's many kinds. There's so many different brands. And each different brand is manufactured differently. Right. And again, they will all feel differently. Uh, they're very different from watercolor paint. People think that when they're getting a watercolor pencil, that they're getting watercolor paint. And it's not like that at all. 
they are completely different. Watercolour paint is very trans translucent, um, it's a wash, whereas a watercolour pencil is a tool. It's almost like a drawing implement as well, because you can do dry into dry, dry into wet, wet into dry. There's so many different techniques that you could actually use a watercolour pencil for. And they think they're getting watercolour paint. And so they get a little bit confused when they buy a watercolour pencil because they expect it to behave the same and it doesn't. So they need to play with a watercolour pencil and see what they can do with it. And then there's ink tents. And ink tents is, they think, is watercolour and it's not, it's dried ink. It's, it's dried ink for the special binder. Mm -hmm. If you think of it as a dried ink, and ink is permanent. So when the when as long as it's been washed out enough, so it's been diluted enough, when it dries, it's permanent. Whereas watercolour, when it dries, you can still go back into it and move it. With the ink tents, you can't. So they're two different things again. So it's not so much as different kinds, it's as different kinds of pencil within the brands. So with the ink tense pencils, there's so many different ways you, you can use them. So you can use them as a light as a light wash. So what I do is I scribble my pencil on a piece of paper first, and then I use a damp brush or a wet brush, and I pick the pigment up off the paper and wash it onto where I want it in my sketchbook. You can use them as a really heavy layer. So you can scribble onto, draw onto your sketchbook and then use a or damp brush. You can wash and mix your colours together. So many different ways of using these pencils. So you can use them wet, you can use them dry. They blend really nicely together. But what is really important with ink tents is when I said to you that when they are dry, they are permanent and they don't shift. Okay, so with watercolour, when you use watercolour layer after layer after layer, it becomes what we call muddy. It starts to look really dirty after a while. With ink tents, it sets permanent. So you can do start it off with a light layer, and then you can do a medium layer, and you leave it dry. Then you can go darker, leave it dry, then you can go really dark. But each colour underneath doesn't shift. It stays permanent. So you don't get that muddy look. But you can also use it on fabric as well. So you can put a piece of fabric in your sketchbook or tissue paper and you can put all sorts in it. You don't have to stick to paper. You can be creative. And normally when you put water on top of your watercolour pencil, it will then shift it and it will then lift up. With ink tens it doesn't do it. There's very, very little colour shift. And if you remember, I said to you, you can use your pencils like a drawing tool. Mm -hmm. So you can then draw into it whilst it's still wet. And you can draw into it when it's dry as well. So then watercolour pencils and ink pencils are more of a tool than your normal paint. And if we do the same with watercolour pencils, you can see it's not as vibrant. So, okay, so watercolour is a more of a natural colour, colour palette. Uh, they're more, not more natural colour washes, ink tens are bold, they're bright, watercolour are natural, they're muted, they're more opaque, ink tens are transparent. So you have more, more, more natural colours here where you've got your lighter washes, your heavy layer. Now I took the same colour from watercolours from ink tents. So you, when you get close, you can see it's more of a, a muted palette. So it's the same colour definitely more muted the ink tent is far more bold and your two colors together and you can see how they blend so you can see the difference boldness from the watercolor to the ink tents so again it's personal preference and what you want to use them for whether you like the muted natural look or whether you like the bold vibrant look one difference is the watercolor is the lift off mm -hmm. And can you still uh, layer on, once uh, a watercolor um, 
uh, colored pencil layer has dried, can you then still add on top as easily as you can with ink tents? Yes, but there's some shifting. If you see here, it's not as vibrant. Right. Okay, so it's it kind of goes ever so slightly, almost chalky. It has a chalky feel to it, which is its binder. Mm -hmm. So it has chalky opaque feel to it but if that's the look you're going for and that's the feel you want then it's perfect for you so if you're going for the trans transparent feel and the bright feel then ink tens would be the pe pencil for you i see so it doesn't go but it's definitely not as bold i see and uh, so um if if you look at all the different kinds of water uh, color pencils that are out there um, is that um, because some of those are kind of wishy-washy, if that's the right uh, word for it. Um, and some are more bright, uh, like the ones that you are showing here. Um, so how uh, is that the binder that makes a difference so much, or is it the yeah. pigment? Do you remember at the beginning we said it's about the quality of the pigments and the quality of the binders? Yes. So the, the lower quality pencils have the lower quality pigments and dye put in them, so they don't pack them full of pigments. Exactly. So they also have lots and lots of fillers. And if you don't get good quality fillers, then your pigment doesn't move and it splits. And what it can do is it almost piles at one end of where you want to move it to, and your pigment filler instead of making nice even washes. And it just becomes a gloopy mess. It is the difference between lower quality pencil to a higher quality artist grade pencil. And you just become defeated. And it means you just give up easier. Yeah. And quick. Then you, yes. So you're moving the uh, the wrong bit <laughs> instead of moving exactly. color. You're just moving. You're just splitting the whole thing, and then it just becomes exactly. wishy washy. Yeah. And you're like, "What does this even mean?" I I grab my watercolors because because that is I think that is kind of the expectation watercolor pencils that it is similar to watercolors. But you explained that. It is really something completely different. It is. And people think, oh, I, I want to do what? The first thing they do is, oh, I want to take a box. I want to do watercolors. And watercolor is actually one of the hardest things you will ever do. And so they think, oh, I want to do watercolor pencils. And you think, oh, please, please don't. <laughs> please, please don't go straight into watercolor pencils. Because <laughs> um, if I show you watercolor paint versus watercolor pencils, so this is a watercolour wash. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't, you can't do that with just normal watercolour pencils. You get a different effect completely. So you have to colour it in and then add water, but it doesn't go flat. Now, if I was expecting to be able to pick up a watercolour pencil and be able to do a watercolour wash with it straight away, I'd become really disillusioned. I think I'm going to be able to do the same thing. But it's not. It's because it's a different media completely. Yeah. You can still get a little effect. You can get a fantastic effect with them. But you think you're going to be able to do the same thing. And it's not. It's a, it's a completely different tool. And you can still do light layers. And you can still do fantastic colour blends in watercolour. But equally, you can do fantastic things with watercolour pencils. But it's still, it does look different. And people think they're going to be able to do exactly the same thing. And that's where they give up straight away because they are not going to get the effects that they think they're going to get. They get different and quite often they get better. Because you can use them wet into dry and you can use dry into wet. So you can get details. It need, you need to play with them. You need to explore them and see what you can do with them. Right. Explore, that's it. Explore and, and play. And actually doing a page like this, I think um, is actually a really great idea 
um, to, uh, to see the differences between your watercolor kit that you have and your watercolor pencils so you actually understand what you can and what you cannot ac accomplish with the two different media. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, that's fantastic. So we talked a little bit um, about the paper that you can use for uh, colored pencils and um, you, you already uh, told us a little bit about it. Did you want to elaborate on that a little bit more? Because there are so many different kinds of paper and I think part of it, again, is personal preference. There um, is. Yeah, go ahead. If, um, when you choose your paper, there are lots of symbols on the front of especially Derwent pads. Let me zoom in here. So you have your size here. I always try and persuade people never to really go below A5. Here in the UK, we are A sizes. Um, I know there's lots of different sizes all over the world, but here we stick to A sizes. I always say, I try to always keep one in your handbag, always try and draw every day because you'll see the difference it makes is phenomenal. It really does make a difference if you can draw every day. So always try and keep one. But it is so much harder to go small. Um, if you can stay by A4, it's great. Try not to go lower than A5. Here we have how many pages you have and your weight. Your weight really does make a difference. If you go really, really thin and really, really light, it does make a difference how many layers your paper can take. If it buckles too much, and when I say too much, so when we add water, it goes wrinkly and cockles. Whilst I like a wrinkly sketchbook, I love that worn, lived in appearance. Too much can be a little off putting. So you want it to a decent weight. So I try and not go below 160 GSM. You do want acid free. Now, to me, this is the important bit. Why is that? Because if you are investing a lot of money in your pencils and your art supplies, you then don't want to move by having an acid paper. Paper with acid in is got bleaching agents in and what it does is it eats away at your pencils and it's a it's a way of brightening paper, making it whiter. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of making cheaper paper look good. We call it optical brightening agent as well in paper. And it's to make paper look brighter and whiter. But what it does is it affects the longevity of your pencil. So if you have pencils that like that, that particularly light fast pencils, where you want your pencils to last for a long time and your pictures to last for a long time, you then don't want your paper yellowing because it's acid free. Or you don't want your pencils changing colour because it's got brightening agents in it. Or something similar to that. So if you're investing a lot of money in your pencils, you then don't want to ruin it by putting it onto paper that's of not much quality. So and we've got Sketch and Store. Now, this is one of my favourites because it has a little gimmick inside it, which is it has an envelope in the back of it. Can you see here? Oh, let me there has an envelope which I can put things in so when I'm collecting things because I'm a terrible collector I collect all sorts so I collect napkins and I collect pictures and I get it because I forget all sorts that's really a great feature yeah okay. especially if you are keeping it as a sketchbook then you have all your paraphernalia just in yes. the back of it and then yes and it's got an elastic band in. So when I've collected all sorts of things on my travels, I don't lose it. Yeah, that's really good. I love that. Very smart. Maybe now that we are in the, um, uh, in the area of acid-free, uh, and you also use the um, light-fast pencils, 
how important is it that um, a colored pencil is light fast? I mean, not all of them are, right? No, they're not. They're all, there's all different grades of pencil and there's all different levels. And it depends what you want to do with them. Mm -hmm. If you're doing commissions and you, of your entering exhibitions, then of course it's important that you use a light fast pencil. And there's different ways of measuring it. So you've got the blue wool scale, which is your ISO 105. So anything over 1.5 on your blue wool scale is classed as fully light fast. So you wouldn't want to commission and put it on your client's wall and it fade. Of course, you wouldn't want to do that. And there's the AST rating 901, where again, everything of one and two is classed as fully light fast. However, if you're doing a sketchbook or if you're a commercial artist or an illustrator where you're after reproduction or scans, then you don't have to use that fully fast range. Um, especially if it's something like Crow Color where you, they're not all of that higher standard, but it's got the beautiful colors of the pinks and the purples and the violets, which never are going to be of that because it's those pigments they just can't get them fully light fast but for reproduction purposes and for sketchbooks they are perfect because they're not going to go on the walls of galleries and they scan super well they really scan well they scan true to color and if you're in a sketchbook it's not seeing super direct sunlight on the wall and there's other things you can do anyway to protect your work. So you can put it under behind UV glass. Other things affect light fast um, and how your work is. So it depends on the paper you use as well. It's not always just down to the pencils you use. It's down to the paper you use. It's down to what you frame it. It's down to where you hang it on the wall. And it's down to if you use solvents as well. Solvents and fixatives, they all affect it. So, light fast, yes, is important if you're an exhibiting artist or if you're doing commissions. But if you're an illustrator, artist, or a sketchbook, you can use those that are not as high on that scale. Just a quick question about solvents, as you mentioned them. I feel like um, solvents do with your normal colored pencils what watercolor pencils are. Is that is that true? Is it like you do something with the binder so you can move the pigment around? Is that the basic of it? With wax-based pencils, yeah. What it does is it breaks the binder down. So when you've got wax-based pencils, you can use either an alcohol, such as a blue pen. If I show you, I have one here. Okay, so the pro are uh, wax-based pencil. Now, if I want to speed that up, what I can use is a dental pen. And it's an alcohol-based pen. Now, I don't have, normally, if I'm blending colour pencil, I would spend hours and hours and hours making sure that I've filled in the tooth of the paper so there's no white speckle showing. But with the blend pen, what I'm going to do is I'm break down the wax, the binder. So I'm going to be moving the pigment around on the paper. I need time because it's the alcohol to break down the binder. Now what's nice about it is because it's alcohol, it's going to evaporate. Now you'll hear people say they can use Vaseline, they can use baby oil, but what it will do is eventually it will eat into your paper and it will destroy your artwork. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see by using an alcohol blender, I've got a seamless blend in a few seconds. Right. But because it's alcohol, that will evaporate 
and it doesn't show through in your sketchbook because that will just disappear. So it doesn't bleed through onto the other side. Now, if I use Vaseline or baby oil, which people do, that will eventually eat through onto the other side of your paper. And it will ruin your sketchbook. Yes, yeah. And so this works only with wax-based uh, colored pencils? No, you can use, um, with oil pencils, you can use your traditional oil-based, oil paint mediums. So you can use the pens, but they can go a little streaky because it's oil pencil so moving on to another question and also kind of a frustration about colored pencils is well the constant sharpening of them because you want sharp points but actually why is it important to have um, uh, a, a sharp point a good pencil point it is really important I know it's frustrating I know but they do work very sharp I have my pencils so sharp that if I drop them, I'd probably cause myself serious injury because I do. I mean, my my pencils are super sharp. If I bring them in, let me find you one. Can you see? Ah, yeah. So. It's, it's okay. almost like a needle. It is. They're, they're surgical sharp. And the reason is, with colour pencil, you want to push it into the troughs and valleys of the paper. If you have it blunt, what it does is it flattens the tooth of the paper. The paper is made up of minuscule troughs and valleys. If you have your pencil blunt, it squashes them. And then you can't get the layers of colour and you can't build up the vibrancy and the brightness of colour. So you want to keep it sharp because it pushes pigment into the paper. And if you maintain a sharp point, colour keeps it going long and you can build up the layers and layers and layers. And colour pencils naturally translucent. So each layer of colour shows through. If you don't have a sharp point, it can't do that. And you get what you call a wax build-up. Yes. And when you get the wax build-up, it just resists it. And instead of putting pigment onto your paper, it's putting wax on your paper. So it's really important to keep them sharp. And I know it's annoying, but it almost needs to become a habit. Okay. And you find that I also rotate my pencil all the time. So I will literally just keep spinning it in my hand constantly to maintain a sharp point at all time. Yeah, that's really smart to do. Um, and so um, what if, I mean, I've had this frustration of having really great pencils and then I try to sharpen them and the lead keeps breaking and breaking every time and the pencil gets shorter and shorter and still the tip falls off. What, how, what to do? That's why, one of the reasons why you should buy an artist pencil, an artist grade, because they glued inside. If you buy a lower quality pencil, they're not glued and they will just keep breaking. So if you buy an artist quality pencil, they're glued. So you sharpen it to the next glued point. So what you should do is, you're better off investing in a helical pencil sharpener. And what that has inside is a helical blade which is it's like the old pencil shards and whilst they're expensive to begin with they will last you years and years and years so you pull it out feed it in until it doesn't go any further keep it firm you turn it until it goes loose if you take it out beforehand it won't be sharp and there's no point rushing it mm -hmm. because you'll just break your pencil. And every now and then, the best way to clean it is to just run a graphite pencil through it. And that's all it needs. 
The other thing is if you have a small pencil sharpener like these, they were never designed for long-term use. They were only ever designed for short-term. And people think they're going to last forever and they're not going to last forever. And we have on the Doma website, there is a sharpening, a pencil sharpening tips guide. One thing to look for is when people say their pencil is breaking, it's quite often is, is the pencil sharpener rather than the pencil. So if you look and your pen shavings are all gnarled up or little bits and pieces, it's because your sharpener is blunt. If it's one long piece, a bit like when you peel an apple and your apple skin is in one piece, your sharpener is fine. If it's in small, tiny pieces, you need a new pencil sharpener. And it's not so much that it's your pencil, it's your sharpener. They were never designed for long-term use. So you're better off investing in something like the Super Point or the Super Point Mini rather than a small pencil sharpener. The other thing is, and I hear it so many th times, people say, oh, put your pencil in the microwave. Please don't put your pencil in the microwave, ever. I know of people that have blown up their microwaves. No. Yes, <laughs> don't ever please microwave your pencils, it doesn't work. Alice, don't microwave your pencils. So um, I have two questions about that. Um, well, the microwave, I would never even think about that, but I, I was told that if you uh, put them in the sun for a while, or if you even, I know someone, uh, someone told me that they put their pencils in a very low temperature oven for like five or 10 minutes. And then the, the leads are like more solid together. I don't know if it's true, but she really does that with all the pencils that she buys. Um, th but you are saying, don't do that. Just make sure that you have a good pencil sharpener. Yeah. I mean, I sometimes, sometimes the leads are broken inside, right? Yeah. And I know we've left them in their car before now tried to bake them, but the temperature you would have to reach in order to remold your pencil is extortionate. So it's not going to happen. And you would have to reform them, re-glue them. It's not going to happen. All you need to do is buy a good sharpener. Okay. And good. if your pencil is still breaking, contact the manufacturer. If it's a good pencil, they'll sort you out anyway. Yeah. Um, at the small colored pencil or this small sharpener that you just showed um that one had i mean if you are on location for example you need to bring a sharpener that is isn't that big as as the one that you showed us even though that is the best one um but for example this one there is this little screw on top so can you actually replace the blade or would you say no just buy a new one you can the blades but to be honest I get rid of them but yeah. what they are I give these to my children and I buy a new one yeah. when I'm going away I normally have two I have one in my art pack I have one spare and I give them either a charity where they send them abroad or I give them to my children and I buy a new one because the amount I spend on pencils I don't want to ruin them the other thing is to look for is if your pencil, if you're sharpening it and then you meet resistance, don't force it. Back off it and start again because you'll see children going. <laughs> right. And that's the best way is to break your pencil. So the best thing to do is back off and start again. But normally I just give them to my children and buy myself a new one for the price of a pencil sharpener. When you think your poly pens more on this, than you that are on this, I think I'd rather buy a new one. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, I agree. And you need to be gentle, and uh, it's 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 part of your your uh, practice of keeping your art tools in shape. So, yeah, yeah and it's a good um, opportunity to, to go to the art shop and buy something new, right? <laughs> so we all need an excuse to do that. Um, so uh, one last thing that I want to ask you is about um, erasing. So uh, d 
Do you ever use erasers? Is it is it something you should do or should not do? Can you do it? What are the best practices for erasers mm. and colored pencils? Erasing is a tool. It's um, a tool that you can make textures with. People think it's um, something that's wrong, but it's not wrong. It's a tool. You know, it, it's a way of creating things. If if I Colour pencil is so pigmented, you'll never remove all of it. But you can remove about 80% of it. A good colour pencil will stain the paper. There is no getting away from it. But lay down. A shaded area. If you use a good polymer eraser, I always use a polymer eraser. Reason being, it doesn't destroy the surface of the paper, it doesn't ruin it, it doesn't leave crumbs, and it doesn't smear the pencil. So a good polymer eraser is also in the battery. So you can make some highlights and make textures, and you can lift it off. Right. Okay. Yep. So you can make small details. So an eraser is only a tool that you can do things with. You can use a kneaded eraser to lift colour off as well. I personally get in a bit of a mess with them because I have very hot hands, so I tend not to use them. But I use them for graphite, but not so much for colour pencil, but I do use them. Um, I like a good polymer eraser. and They are something that you can have in your art pack. And you shouldn't be scared of using them. There's no right and there's no wrong. And nobody should say that you can and can't do something. Okay, that's great. So it's just really up to you if you want to use them or not. And then also find the right one that, that feels good for you. One last thing. Because uh, one of the other sort of frustrations about colored pencils is that when you draw um, uh, in your sketchbook, um, you close the sketchbook and then the colored pencil might actually um, sort of print onto the other side of the sketchbook, uh, of the other page. What do you do about that? Do you use fixatives or not? What, what are the best practices to deal with that? If it's not a water-based medium, so if it's watercolor pencil or ink tents, I don't use fixatives because it will make those pencils run. Well, if it's a colour pencil, yes, there's no reason why you can't use fixatives, but use a light layer and then let it dry, then another light layer and let it dry. If it's water-based, then don't use fixatives. You're better off using a glassine paper in between so it doesn't come off. Never use hairspray. I know people say, oh, just use hairspray, it's fine. It doesn't. It yellows your paper. And if you're putting hours and hours into a piece of artwork, don't ruin it by using hairspray. Look after the work you've done. And either use glassine paper, or even if you use tracing paper, it's better than nothing. Right. Or use fixative. Yes. Okay, good. Well, I think taking care of your art is, uh, is a very good advice. Um, I think you gave us so much advice. <laughs> Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to give us or tell us or just some parting advice or anything like it? To have fun. It's about creating and it's about having fun with your art images. I can tell you what to do and I can give you lots and lots of tips and advice. But every day I learn something new. I might have been at this 12 years and I might know what every technical thing, but I still learn something every day from my students. So have fun and create. And don't be scared to pass on what you know, because you'd be surprised what other people don't know. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time and uh, for uh, all the knowledge that you've shared and um, we will dive into uh, our homework we will dive into our colored pencils and uh, play and have fun thank you so much thank you for having me 
Yes, so that was a lot of information, wasn't it? I hope uh, you took notes. I did. Um, it really was a lot of information. It was super helpful. I learned so much. Um, and I hope you did too. Um, Judith was in the uh, comment section all the time. So any additional questions that popped up um, uh, were answered. So that is fantastic. If you have any questions right now for me about colored pencils, the course, just post them in, uh, in the comments and I can answer those. Or any not too technical questions <laughs> about colored pencils, I can answer those too. Um, uh, in the meantime, let me just share uh, the website that Judith has mentioned that you could find any charts there like color charts uh, charts and of course she mentioned a lot of products you can find them all on derwentart.com um, and of course if you would like to join our course colored pencils then you should really go to sketchbookschool.com because that's where it's all at it's an online course we started just this week just monday so it's not too late to sign up and there's a bunch of very enthusiastic uh, people already uh, working on their homework. It's a fantastic community and um, yeah, what we're doing in there is super colorful and so much fun. So if you haven't signed up yet, um, then please do because I really don't want you to, you to miss out on this fantastic opportunity to learn more about colored pencils and how to actually use them in your sketchbook and in your art because you are watching this and that means you love colored pencils um, I am looking through the uh, comments and I don't see any additional uh, uh, questions well, I have to say, this was really very complete. I mean, we addressed many of the questions that came in on beforehand and also during uh, the webinar. So I think we can all be really happy and we can all uh, just happily start on um, our, you know, developing even more fun stuff, creating even more fun stuff using our colored pencils. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And thank you, Judith, once again, for all your expertise and all your fantastic advice and uh, being so active here in the comments. Uh, thanks all, and we'll see you in class. Bye.